Hey you guys, it's Peter and welcome to my channel. Peter likes books <laughs> and I'm sitting right outside of Taco Bell. I literally, look at these flowers right in front of me. They are so pretty. Did you see those? And I literally just finished my review video. I just reviewed the new pineapple whip free. So you have to go over and check it out, but I can tell you it's delicious. And I'm eating my dinner, which is a bean burrito. This is kind of like a lunch and learn. Do you remember those? When I'm um, like, I remember in elementary school, every once in a while we would do like a book reading or discussion and you would bring like your sack lunch and we would all sit like on the floor in the library, you know, and you would eat your lunch and those were like real fun days. But then when I was like, working for a treatment center and organization like we would have like lunch and learns where you brought your lunch and then you would sit there and like you know learn like you would sit through it you know what i'm talking about this is kind of like a lunch and learn but this is kind of like a lunch and talk so bear with me while i finish my burrito so good all of the vegetarian options at taco bell are so delicious i was just talking about that on my review channel the black bean crunch wrap supreme they have a vegetarian menu the black bean crunch wrap supreme but the black bean quesarita is my favorite. But anyway, I'm also drinking. I also have my coffee that I just got from Starbucks. Yesterday, people really liked me driving around. Really liked me talking about the worst book that I read in, tw in the last two years. So I thought today, I'm going to go in. I know some people are going to be like, I am so over this eating thing with him. I don't care. I just want to make a video over this channel. I'm having so much fun making videos today. So I wanted to finish this up. I only have just a little bit more burrito left, so bear with me. But today, I wanted to talk about some of the best books that I've read this year. Because, and I'm just going to vlog. I'm just going to drive around and vlog and talk about it. I have been so blessed to be able to read some really amazing books this year. Um, like, I've just read some books this year that I just never thought, like... I don't know how, why I hadn't read them before, and one of them is um, Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. I love that book so much. And um, that kind of set a course for me reading some literary fiction or nonfiction that I thought was important because I read um, Delia Owens' Where the Crawdads Sing, and then right after that, I finished, when I finished that, I think I read, because my cousin recommended it, she's like, if you like that, you will really like Educated by Tara Westover, which is a nonfiction book, it's her memoir, about how she grew up in the Appalachia, and she grew up in Appalachia, I think, is where it was, oh no, maybe it was Utah, I think she grew up, was it Utah? And, um, it was Utah, I'm almost positive it was Utah, and why do I think it was Virginia, though? <laughs> I don't know. I don't remember now. But anyway, and she was didn't have any formal education until she was 17. And it talks about her family and on and on and on. I love that book so much. And then I went into uh, reading Little Fires Everywhere. But the thing is, like, by the time that I got to that book, I was like, <clears throat> this is too much literary fiction. I need to read something fun. And that's when I read, I think, Camino Island. I read that after that and loved Camino Island by John Grisham. It was so good. Anyway. Enough of the mukbang. Clean up as you go. So, um, I wanted to talk about some of the other books, though, because I have read so many books that are good this year. <clears throat> Hello? hand sanitizer. I have so many different kinds of hand sanitizer. I just want the real basic kind because my hands are just, just clean my hands. I love this Mrs. Meyer's hand sanitizer so much. So anyway, I uh, want to go in here and I want to tell you about the books that I read this year. I read, the first book I read was The Noel Diary collection by uh, Richard Paul Evans. I read that actually on the beach. I know, it was a Christmas story, but it was pretty good. I read that on the beach in Cancun. And then The Good Nurse, we read for the book club. If you tell for the book club. Conviction by Denise Mina. Oh, my God. If you love true crime, this is a fiction book about... And I'm not putting any of the titles below and whatever, but it's Conviction by Denise Mina, M-I-N-A. So get your pad out. Pause this and come back to it. It's a book about um, a woman that is listening to a true crime podcast as her marriage falls apart. And she and another guy go on the run to, like, try to find out, like, who did this true crime thing. It's so good. And then the Celestine Prophecy, Celestine Prophecy, 
by James Redfield. I had read that before. I read that for my Peterson's channel. Evidence of the Affair by Taylor Jenkins Reid. It was boring. Um, the Secret for Rhonda, by Rhonda Byrne. I read that for my Peterson's channel. That was good. The House of the Clock and Its Walls. I really loved those John Belair's books. And I read them when I was a kid or I had started them. And I never finished them. So I read that one. And then I read The Figure in the Shadows. And then I read, which was a sequel, and then I read Call Me. I still haven't watched the movie. I still need to watch the movie, uh, The Clock with the House on Its Walls. I then read Call Me God, The Untold Story of the DC Sniper Investigation. It's an Audible original, and it's Audible exclusive. It is so good. And I didn't really know anything about the DC Sniper. And that whole story, so sad. Um, but the thing that was so fantastic about the Audible version was that they had the victims, they had the victims' families, with some of the victims that had survived, and they had the victims' families. At the end, they have all of the victims' families. <clears throat> they, like, have them give statements after, like, the sentencing and things. Then I read Proof of Heaven, a neurosurgeon's journey into the afterlife. It was eh. Mindhunter inside the FBI's elite serial crime unit. It was great. A lot of these books are from my Peterism's channel. Make Your Bed. Little things that can change your life and maybe the world. It was okay. The Hand on the Wall, which was the third part in the, a Truly Devious series, I loved it. I lo That is probably... I'm not a big series reader anyway, or trilogy, or whatever. Or even duologies. But that book by Maureen Johnson was one of the best books I've ever read. Last Days of August um, was about uh, a porn star that took her life. And that was actually an audible like extra book for the month that you could read i was really surprised how good that was it was really about social media and how social media really has an effect on our life it was really good butcher baker um a true account of a serial murder that was about which i think his name is uh, robert hansen that was from he was alaska's first serial killer that was a Mel's pick for the book club that month. And I really went into it because the book came out in like <clears throat> 91. And I said, this book is going to be dated. It's not going to be any good. It was really, really good. And then we're, oh, we're the Crawdad thing. And then I read Ferris Beach, which was a reread for me. I read it like 25 years ago. Still loved it. The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. Oh my God, you guys. That book was so good. I could not believe it. Um, so good, so good, so good. I have Testaments, which is a sequel to it, and I haven't read it yet. In Five Years by Rebecca Searle, which was a short romance. That was actually pretty good. Rolling in the Deep by Mira Grant. Um, Little Fires Everywhere. Camino Island. Educated. The Butterfly Garden by Dot Hutchinson, which one of my friends told me to read and said it was like the greatest mystery ever, and it totally sucked. The Sundown, Mot the Sundown Motel by Sim Simone St. J uh, James. So, so good. It's a mystery. True crime. That is not true crime. It's a mystery that reads like true crime that is mixed with paranormal and it is so well done. I loved it. Um, Run by Blake Crouch. Loved it. The Wife Between Us by Greer Hendricks. I had like waited and waited and waited to read that book and tried to start it so many times. I really did not like it. Molly's Game. That was one of our book, uh, true crime book clubs. The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. I can already kind of see um, what are going to be my favorites for the year. It's going to definitely be Where the Crawdads Sing right now and The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires where Grady Hendrix. It was so good. If I could recommend one book, if you like things that are a little bit scary, if I could re recommend one book this year that I thought was so well done, that would be the book. Um, and he is the author of My Best Friend's Exorcism that came out a couple years ago. And then my book, because I read that on the BookTube channel. Hi. And then Horror Store by Grady Hendrix. It was another book that he read. And it was a book about kind of all this weird stuff that happens in a store that's similar to Ikea over one night and it's told in real time. It was really, really well done. Um, and then Camino Wins, which was the sequel to Camino Island. I did not love that as much as Camino Island. Dead Ends, the Eileen Warnos book. That's our book for the month that we're going to be going over on Sunday um, on, for the True Crime Book Club. It will be on you now. And then The House of Impossible Beauties by Joseph Cassara. Another, that was really, really good. It was about the, if, you know, if you've watched Pose or uh, Paris is Burning, it was a fictional telling of the life of uh, Angie Extravaganza, and um, who was the, the the mother of the House of Extravaganza um, in the ball scene in Harlem. And it was really, really well done. I was really impressed with it. 
um, it got a little boring in parts, but whatever. And then Origin by J.A. Conrath, it was it was not good. The In Between by Michael Landweber. I mean, they were both okay. They just weren't great. And then Hunt for the Skinwalker, which I talked about yesterday. It was horrible. And now I am reading The Girl Beneath the Sea, and it is by Andrew Maine. And it is one of the best books that I have read in a long, long time. In fact, I was just talking to my good Judy Tanya on the phone, who has read, are you ready for this? She's read six books this week. She said, oh yeah, she was like so-and-so, one another one of our friends that reads a lot. She was like, she recommended me to read this uh, series, and she said, so I started it, and I said, well, how far are you in the series? And she goes, well, I finished that, and I started a new book last night. She goes, but I'm almost done with it. I'm like, Tanya reads so much. And I was like, how do you get through these books? She's like, I just sit on the back patio, and I just read and read and read, and she just gets through these books like nobody's business. She reads all on her phone, too, because she likes it, like, where it lights up. I can't do that. But anyway, um... Yeah, she's read six books this week, and so I was telling her about it, and she said, is it really that good? And I said, yeah, it's fantastic. Like, it's probably one of the best mysteries I've read in a long time. It reminds me a lot of, um, like, Michael Connolly books. And I can't remember who else I was thinking of last night when I was reading it that reminded me of. Um, it kind of reminds me of, I read them, like, a mix between Patricia Cornwell, and I can't think of her name, but she wrote the Deja Dead books back in the day, and I really liked those books. But it reminds me of those as well. And um, they're just, it's really well done. It's about this woman and she is a uh, a diver. And her dad was a treasure hunter. And it takes place in Fort Lauderdale in Miami. Which I love anyway because I want to move to South Florida. And um, she dives for the police department, of Fort, the Fort Lauderdale Police Department. But she's doing something else and she's diving in this canal. And she comes up and there's a dead body. And all of a sudden, and I'm not ruining it for anybody. This is like right at the beginning. All of a sudden, she's a suspect, but she's also being chased by the people that killed the, the body that comes up in the water. It's very, like, intense reading it, and um, it's just really well done, and so I hope it becomes a series. I'm really excited about it, and um, yeah, I just feel so blessed. I have read... That car almost swerved and hit me. I am so... I feel so blessed for all of the great books that I've read this year, and you know, I think the thing that has been helpful is that... I haven't, like, planned out a lot of my reading. In fact, like, when I'm done with a book, I'm like, what do I want to read next? And I look at what I have, or I look at Audible, and I, like, go and order. Like, I just recently um, just got that book, like, a couple days ago. And I also got the um, Suzanne Collins book, the new Hunger Games series book. But, like, now I kind of don't want to read that right now, so I may wait and read that later. Um, I feel like I'm, I'm kind of in this moment where I want to read thrillers and mysteries, and so I think I'm going to continue to do that. And then if when I'm done reading, because I, I go through phases where I read like a couple books that are literary fiction, a couple, and I haven't really read any like a young adult this year at all. And I have a couple young adult books that I want to read. So maybe I'll do that next. I don't know. But you know, like it's, I just feel so blessed that I have read so many fantastic books. I mean, when I look over 2020, there's only been two to four books that I have been like, eh, they haven't been that great. You know what I mean? So, I mean, there have been years before, and I talked about this yesterday where I feel like I get stuck in a book and I can't get out of it. And I'm just like, ugh, whatever, you know? And then I just keep on reading it for whatever reason. I have a hard time DNFing a book. Do you have a hard time doing that? I have like a really, really hard time DNFing a book. Like, I feel like A, I paid for it. And B, I feel like, I don't know, like I just want to give it a chance. Like, unless it's like a 500 page book. I'm trying to think of some books that I've like, DNF. Well, Helter Skelter, I cannot get through that book. I mean, I've tried it on Audible. I've tried it countless times just reading it. Um, although one of the things I've really tried this year is I have tried to listen to longer and longer audiobooks, especially while we've been at home in isolation because I really wouldn't listen to an audiobook that was over like eight hours. And recently I tried to push it up to like 12 or 13 hours and some 16 and 18 hour books. And I'm trying to really uh, listen to longer and longer books because a lot of the really great books are really long, you know? Um, the Harry Potter ones, which I, again, of course this year, want to finish that series and I haven't. Um, I want to read that book, the by Yana Hanagahara. I can't remember what that book is called. Um, and I want to, there's so many books I want to read that are really long. 
but like for me to listen to or sit down and read a massive book like that, like I have to really, really, really be into it. So it's been like, you know, this year has been like really good for me to listen to longer and longer books because it's helped me like, you know, I don't know, realize that I can listen to a longer book and not get bored. And sometimes the longer books I've listened to, I've enjoyed more than the shorter books I've listened to. So anyway, that's about it. That's about all I have for today. I hope you guys enjoyed that little vlog. It was so much fun. Little vlog, mukbang, lunch and learn. And um, if you guys have topics you want me to talk about that I can just vlog and drive and talk about, let me know. Put it in the comment section below. I love you guys. I will be doing a couple tag videos later in the week. I have like two that I've been, that one that I've been tagged in and one that I want to do. Um, so I love you guys and I will see you then. Bye.